My name is Paul Reed. I work at Netflix. And there it is. Um, I spend most of my days uh, thinking about incident management, uh, incident analysis, retrospectives, postmortems, blamelessness. Who here does retros after their incidents? Yeah, good. Okay, well, we're going to talk about it in a different context today. So our story starts in Daly City, California, beautiful Daly City, uh, which has objectively one of the best in and outs there because it's also co-located co co with a Krispy Kreme. So it's your one-stop shopping for fat and sugar. I picked someone up at the airport and we uh, did a burger run and it was time to go home. This is a satellite photo of the, the same in and out there. And we're all ready to go and I, of course, make a left turn because we're going to get back on the highway that's on the other side of the street. This was the intersection that I roll up to and, uh, you know, seems like a normal day. We're fat and happy on our cheeseburgers. And then as I make that turn, Coming up behind me, which is certainly unexpected, is the police. Now, by the way, this is actually the Daily City PD officer who pulled me over. And the reason I put his photo in the deck is because he has the best name ever. And I'm not kidding you. His name's Officer Directo of the Daily City PD. So he pulls me over, and he's, he's not, do you know what you did wrong? None of that. He's like, did you see the sign? What sign? He's like, license and registration, please. So he runs all of that fun information. And in the next 15 minutes, he comes back with the ticket. And I was like, what just happened? I was having burgers, and now I owe the county $238. Like, this is, this is not a good afternoon. So we're going to go back to that intersection. I'm going to be quiet. I want you to look at that intersection and see if you see anything weird. So how many signs did I supposedly not obey? It turns out there's two right turn only signs that are supposedly in your field of vision. But I was like, this seems weird to, to me. Why are there two signs? Are they both about the same intersection? So if you actually look at both signs and zoom in, you'll notice they have a different font. They have different dimensions. They look different. And I thought, well, that's kind of strange. And I had the question, uh, well, what should a sign look like, a right turn only sign look like? So then I went down this rabbit hole of like the manual on uniform traffic control devices that shows you what signs should look like and where they should be placed. And uh, about 20 hours later of my life that I will never get back, I found out that that sign has not been street legal for 15 years which I thought was kind of interesting, and that's the regulation. R R11 California R has been superseded by R53R. But then there's a the question, all right, well, this, the signs are weird, but then let's look at this right turn only sign. There's markings on the ground into that parking lot, by the way, this is the DMV, the Daily City DMV, um, that have you go that way. So that's also odd. Some people shouted out the tree. Well, the picture on the right, I took about six months later in the dark, and you'll notice that the tree is obscuring even more of the sign. So the question is, who's responsible for making sure that we can see that tree? Is it the city? Is it someone else? And finally, these street markings are kind of odd. You can see that one where like, there was a right turn arrow painted, and then somebody's like, no, 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 we'll paint some other you know, arrow. You'll also notice there's no uh, double yellow line. So it wouldn't occur to you to not uh, turn left. So there's three sort of takeaways. When I rolled up to that intersection, and when the cop rolled up to that intersection, we both had a view of what the other person was thinking, and neither of them was correct. So in an incident when that happens, the situation may not be as it seems. When you're conducting an incident analysis, you want to do that as closely after the incident as you possibly can. If I had not returned later in the day to take the photos that I took, I probably wouldn't have the data that I needed to show that something was wrong. And finally, I love Dr. Decker's quote, if it made sense to one person, it's probably going to make sense to other people too. And I actually watched a bunch of people turn left out of that intersection when I was taking photos so that I could go to traffic court. So of course, um, my case that day was the only case that the judge did not make a ruling on. She said, oh, I'm going to take this case under advisement. I was like, oh God, I don't know what that means. That's bad. Um, but were they going to take these arguments about the new view? Well. Boom. They did. So friends, 
Practice those incident analysis skills because they you'll be surprised where they come in handy. I'm Paul Reed, J. Paul Reed on Twitter. That's all I got.